Hello guys, it's Julia here. Sorry about not uploading a lot. I've been really busy with school, but hopefully after this next month I'll be less busy. So I'm actually doing a voiceover because the audio was staticky on my mic for some reason. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to properly create a Windows 11 VM in VMware Workstation. So you can see that I have a Windows 11 VM, but it's not correct. As you can see, there's no TPM because I used an ISO of Windows 11 that I downloaded with UUP dump and I believe it used a Windows 10 setup so it didn't ask for TPM when installing it so it just never had it. So we're going to edit this VM and fix it. So we're going to go and add a TPM but as you can see it says we must encrypt the VM before we can add a TPM module. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go to the encryption settings. So I'm showing you guys where you need to encrypt it, but first you can see we're on Microsoft Windows, and then we're going through the settings as you can see here. And then you can see this is where you actually encrypt it. Now before you encrypt it, you need to make sure that UEFI and Secure Boot is enabled. As you can see on my VM, I do have UEFI and Secure Boot, meaning that I can encrypt it. So then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go encrypt it. But before I encrypt it, you need to make sure you have enough space because on the drive you're encrypting it on, if there is data on that VM, it will require you to have some free space on the drive that the VM is contained on. So I will go and check the space before I actually click the encrypt button. So you can see there, I do have definitely enough free space to encrypt the VM. When you encrypt, you do have to set a password. Now, I just set a password as 1234 because, you know, why not? It's easy to remember. It's not like it's an important VM or anything like that. Now, on Mac OS, it does require, I believe, it to be at least six characters. So you could just do like 123456 or whatever you want to do so that you don't forget it. So when you are creating a new VM, which I will give a demo of that soon, you will need to have UEFI and Secure Boot, 4 gigs or more of RAM, at least 64 gigs of storage or more. You can see this VM is actually 60 gigs, but it still worked because it still lets you install on lower storage amounts. It just doesn't recommend it. Like in the setup, it'll say we recommend more storage, but it'll still let you install. Keep in mind, however, though, I believe you do need to have a supported CPU because the setup does check your CPU, I'm pretty sure. And if you have a CPU that is older than Intel 8th gen or that is, you know, not newer than Ryzen 2nd gen, you may run into issues and it's saying it's not supported. So I don't think this works if you have an unsupported CPU in your computer, but I never actually tried it with the newer ISO. So you guys can tell me. Also, you can download a Windows 11 ISO by searching Windows 11 download on Google and going to the Microsoft link. And I believe you don't actually need to use the media creation tool anymore. You can actually just download the ISO, which is really nice because back then with Windows 10, it forced you to use the media creation tool if you were on Windows. So that's actually pretty interesting. So anyways, that's that. I'll come back when this is done. So as you guys can see, the encryption just finished. It's now encrypted. We can either change the password or remove the encryption. However, I would not remove it because yeah, obviously not a good idea. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna add our TPM module. So don't remove it because it does mention that you could lose data if you remove it. Although I think that might only be if you have it encrypted with BitLocker, but I would still not do that anyway. So we're going to start my VM here that I've already had just to show that it does indeed have a TPM module in it. Now something I didn't say before is I bet most people that were trying to install Windows 11 back then probably did get a it's not supported. So hopefully this helps you guys out because it should unless your CPU isn't supported. So now I'm going to go to device manager and I am going to show that indeed we do have a TPM module. You'll go under security devices and you'll see trusted platform module 2.0. Now note, like I said before, you most likely will need a supported CPU in your computer. There are workarounds though, such as taking a Windows 10 installer and putting in a Windows 11 install.wimmer install.esd, which will bypass the CPU check. However, if you do do that, I still recommend having the TPM and secure boot because it will probably make the VM work better because of the newer security features. 
I believe there are ways to actually trick the VM into thinking it's a different CPU, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't know how to do that. And I think it's just easier to put the Windows 11 install file in a Windows 10 ISO and installing it that way and then enabling these settings. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to install a fresh VM now. Well, my other VM is updating, but it's fine because it'll end up shutting off later. So I'm going to go to File, New Virtual Machine. I'm just going to do Custom, leave those settings default, install the OS later because I don't like the easy install. It says Windows 10 or later, which is interesting. I thought it would say Windows 11, and this is the latest version of VMware Workstation, so I don't know. Then I'm going to name it Windows 11 2 because I already have an existing Windows 11 VM. It's the wrong file location, so I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to make a new folder and call it Windows 11 2 in the correct location. So then, oh yeah, that probably popped up because the other VM shut off. So anyways, I'm going to click next. Be sure to enable secure boot on that screen. Now for this, I'm going to do 1 and 4. However, I believe Windows 11 requires at least two cores. For memory, I'm just going to do 8 gigs of RAM because I have 32 gigs of RAM in my computer. So that'll work fine. I'm going to leave these settings default. And then when I create the disk, I'm going to make it 64 gigs because that's what Windows 11 requires. So now I'm just going to finish setting up the VM. I'm going to click customize hardware. I can't really do a lot here, so I'm just going to add the ISO first and then go back and edit the settings for the TPM and encryption and all that. So now I got the Windows 11 ISO added. Keep in mind that you could go and download the ISO, like I said, from Microsoft without the MCT, believe it or not, which I still think is pretty cool. So now that I finished setting up the VM, I am gonna go back into the virtual machine settings and go and encrypt the VM, because obviously you need to encrypt the VM in order for this to work, like I've said earlier in the video. So just gonna enter a password again and let the VM encrypt. It's fast because there's no data, I haven't installed it yet. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add the TPM module because we're able to. Now after adding the TPM, I check UEFI, which it is there. In fact, you can't even disable it because of TPM because I believe that UEFI does require TPM in order to do it. So now we actually should be able to install the VM and it shouldn't complain about it not being supported or anything like that because we meet all of the system requirements now. So. The VM is booting. Now keep in mind, once again, if your CPU is not supported, this probably won't work. But there are the workarounds, like I mentioned, even Microsoft has a workaround that you can do, but they do not recommend it. It even says they don't recommend it. Then again, they don't recommend Windows 11 on any system that cannot support it, which is obvious because of the new security features. Gonna install Windows 11 Pro because Windows 11 Home forces a Microsoft account. Yeah, I don't wanna deal with that. So then we're just gonna go ahead and install the VM like normal. You can see it's working. Like I said, there's workarounds. I recommend the one I said earlier in the video if your CPU isn't supported, which is the Windows 10 ISO, and then put in the Windows 11 install.wim or ESD. So anyways, I'm gonna let this install and I'm gonna come back when it's done. Okay, so we finally got to the desktop. As you can see, I did disconnect the internet just to make the setup quicker. If you do want to re-enable it, you know, VM, removable devices, network adapter, and that's, I just connected it as you can see, but it would say disconnect if it was connected. Keep in mind that if you did install Windows 11 Home, it would try and force a Microsoft account. So if you don't want it to do that, be sure to not install 11 Home because it actually forces you to be on the internet and Pro doesn't, but Pro will still ask for a Microsoft account but if you disable the internet, it won't and setup will be much quicker. So now we're gonna go to device manager and we're gonna see our TPM under security devices. Yep, our trusted platform module 2.0. I don't know what that base system device was, probably because we didn't have VMware tools installed, but you can just go to VM, install VMware tools, and then you can install it. That way you can have the better screen and more of the drivers and stuff like that. So anyways, that is how you get Windows 11 fully working in VMware Workstation. As I said, I've not tried it on an unsupported CPU, so I don't know if it's going to say it's not supported. Most likely will if it's the newer ISO. Then again, you could just do the method I said, like the 10 installer, which I don't want to really repeat myself too much, but you know what I mean. 
and it doesn't even need TPM, but I still recommend enabling it anyway. And keep in mind that with encrypted VMs, you will have to enter a password every single time you launch VMware. And with Mac OS on VMware Fusion, it requires six characters. I learned that because someone on Mac OS said it required six instead of four. So anyways, I'm gonna end the video off here. It's actually good I did a voiceover. I cut out a lot of time doing this. But hopefully I can get a new mic soon because this mic I feel like isn't as good in my opinion. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try and help you. If you have any problems, let me know. And if you find out more about the CPU stuff, let me know. But I'm pretty sure it will say it's unsupported if it is the 11 ISO. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.